So working on the beetle today, uh, we've been working on it. I guess the last video that I sent was probably maybe two weeks ago or something like that. Um, we got stumped on the engine tin. We got everything together on the motor and had to start putting the engine tin together. And uh, you start finding out that there's a progression to the way the engine tin needs to go on. <clears throat> and because we piece together a lot of this engine tin from uh, our, our local guy who's got a bone yard and you can go out and he's got um, a big shed with all sorts of scrap parts. Um, we had to find pieces and what you end up seeing as you go through this is, I mean, if you were to just buy the stuff brand new, then you could probably get exactly what you need. But if you want to save money and you have a bone yard that you can go to, um, you kind of have to make do with what you find and kind of modify and fabricate and that sort of thing. Um, so right now, this is, I'm gonna flip you around, and as you can see here, this is what uh, the engine is looking like. We've got all the, the tin on, finally. Um, got the motor put together. Uh, as you can see, got the exhaust system put on. Um, and we've got a couple of unique things to this that I'll uh, walk you through. So probably the last time that you saw it, we had uh, the engine case um, with the cylinders and you can't see the cylinders because of the engine tin. Uh, if you come up underneath, you can kind of, kind of see up and well, it's kind of difficult to see up under that too. Um, but anyways, it's, it's all there. So we had the, the case, the engine tin or, or the, uh, the, the cylinders, the pistons, uh, all the way to the head. You can see the valve, uh, head, um, covers there. And as we started uh, trying to put things together, we started finding out that, you know, all of this tin that you see here, um, this stuff is really important because this is an air-cooled engine. It is not a water-cooled engine. It uses air to cool itself. And all of this tin, uh, as you can see here as we come around, and I'll, sh I'll talk about it in just a second, uh, is very, uh, very important. And so um, we got... Uh, to the point of, you know, putting this tin on, we found out that we were um, missing a few pieces. And so the order that all of this goes on is, is very important. So the first piece that has to go on, I'm kind of point, pointing to it here. This is called your breastplate. This is a two-piece thing. You kind of see a seam that goes right through through there, that seam. That seam, you've got this piece, and then you've got this piece here. That piece that I'm pointing at right there is the breastplate. It bolts on first to the case before you can put this pulley on. So that goes on first, and then you can put your pulley on if you want to. Um, for a while, we just used a, a, a dummy pulley, uh, you know, just an old one that we could bolt on in case we needed to turn the, uh, uh, the, the engine over. Uh, so that goes on first, and all of these are little... Um, I believe they are 10, um, 10 millimeter bolts. The heads are, um, they're actually six millimeter by 10 millimeter. So you can kind of see these guys here, uh, and it uses a ton of them. So the first piece that goes on is this breastplate. And then next that goes on, I'm going to see if I can get up under here so you can see there's a piece that's right here. And, um, if I come up above, you can kind of see that there are one, two bolts there. It's kind of hard to see. One, two bolts. Uh, the first piece that bolts is that one right there. You don't bolt this one yet because another piece bolts into it. So that one goes in. Uh, so that's this is what they call your front uh, air deflector tin. So basically what happens is um, fresh air comes through the top uh, of the um, the, the back of your car, there's some vents there, uh, comes down and it will come into this and your fan is spinning and pulls it in. The fan then blows it a couple of directions. As you can see, you've got your heater tubes that come down here on either side to provide heat and defrost to the car. Um, and then you've got some that uh, it spins it out. This is where the air, uh, the oil cooler is. It spins it down and this right here takes you out through the bottom uh, of the car. There will be another engine tin that um, sits right here. As you can see, this guy right here will end up sitting right here. We gotta do some mod to it. Um, and then the rest of it, uh, the, the, uh, the air blows over the cylinders and comes down and out. Uh, and as you can see, um, ends up coming out the, this bottom area here. Uh, so, you got your breastplate, you've got these two left and right air deflectors. They're small, so we, we had one, 
Um, we found, let's see if I can find the scrap pieces around here. I don't know if we still have them out anywhere. Yep, here we go. Sorry. So, this is the left side right here. As you can see, you can see where it bolts over. And so basically, this goes up in, in that area. So that's your left one. And then uh, you got your right one here that goes over on this side. As you can see, this one just real deteriorated, but we use this as a pattern uh, to cut our own. Um, and so those are very important. Those go on second after your breastplate. Um, and then you start working your way around. You have to put your uh, cylinder shrouds on here. Um, as you can see, you've got some, uh, some bolts uh, here. Again, these are the 6x10 uh, mil guys. Um, you got two bolts there. Uh, it bolts again uh, down there. You got two more over on this side. You got two more on the back side. Same thing over here. You got two more on the back side. Um, so you got that. And then after you got all of that in, you can put this uh, rear engine 10 on. Again, it's kind of confusing because you would think this would be the front engine 10 because you're looking at the engine. But this is actually the rear uh, of the engine. The front is technically on this side. So this would be the front engine 10 uh, and the rear engine 10. As you can see, we had to modify uh, because we're using a um, aftermarket exhaust. We've got our normal um, uh, heat exchangers here, um, and typically you would have the stock muffler, and they've got some other pieces here, um, but we wanted to go with an aftermarket a muffler. This is a um, GT, it's a glass pack um, a muffler. I think it's about 120 bucks or so. I got this from uh, J-Bug. Uh, and uh, the nice thing about JBug and CIP is that if you spend over $100, it's free shipping. So you kind of have to plan things out. Uh, I did purchase some stuff from CIP, like the distributor, the coil, uh, the fuel pump, um, and some other things. Uh, and so you kind of have to plan that out if you're... Um, you know, needing like a $10 part, it's not worth it necessarily to just have to buy the $10 part and have to pay 10 bucks of shipping. So, um, so anyways, uh, what we did, this is kind of, uh, the way, um, you can still keep your cabin heat and defrost using these guys, but having the aftermarket exhaust, like you see here, basically you just take these heat tubes here and instead of traditionally they would run down, as you can see, there's a hole here and we welded that up. Um, these would have normally come down to your heat exchange boxes right here where your uh, old muffler was, but we take that and route that straight down um, to these heat tubes here. Uh, and that ends up funneling air back through, and then when you want to kick on your heat, you pull this and it allows heat to come into um, to your cabin for your defrost and everything. Um, so that's uh, for that aftermarket uh, exhaust. As you can see, we got the chrome alternator, uh, single single point here. Um, and uh, we've got a, a two barrel carb that's gonna end up going on. It's a progressive um, that we got from uh, our local bug guy. Uh, he had several used ones, so uh, we'll end up rejetting that. Um, your oil filler here, uh, we had to make a mod to it because, as you can see, it kind of drops down beneath here. It had a big curve to it that came down, and it just didn't fit. So we had to end up cutting it off. We also had to end up cutting this piece off here some in order to make room for uh, your heat tube. Um, what else? Uh, again, lots of these little uh, 6 mil by 10 mil guys um, to connect all of your tin. Um, even up under here, you've got 10, as you can see, this is two parts over here. And one of the things that you have to remember on this side, this is, uh, uh the right side and your thermostat goes in there. Well, we were told that it's better just to leave the thermostat out because if the thermostat goes bad, uh, you fry your engine. And so, um, it's just better just to leave it off. And so we've chosen to leave it off, but you still have to have, um, your cylinder, I mean, your, uh, your heat tins there on the bottom. So all this kind of pulls together. You've got some bolts that, um, go into the case down there as well. Uh, uh, a good, uh, practice is to take a tap 
and run it into a lot of those guys. We had to have a six mil tap that we ran into all of these spots where we were gonna run in these, um, these bolts and these screws just to make sure that they were clean. Uh, on a few of them, we actually had to take some standard um, nuts and run the tap through to basically uh, re-thread it for, um, uh, for the uh, six mil. Uh, so yeah, so that's basically kind of the front side of it. Um, this, it, it takes some coercion to kind of get everything to set in, you know, especially if you're getting stuff from a boneyard. Um, if you're buying it brand new, I'm sure that you're still going to have some stuff that you got to do to kind of coerce it into to place. Um, as we come around back, you've got, uh, this is what they call the doghouse style cooler. So your oil cooler is up in here and then we got this doghouse. Now this, we, uh, we did not have this and our bone, uh, our, our local guy in the, with the boneyard didn't have it either. Uh, so we just looked at some pictures online to, you know, kind of did some math and some measurements and we fabricated, uh, our own. I think if you buy this online, it's, it's about 30 bucks or so, but you know, we had the, the metal here and the time and the tools. So, um, we decided to kind of fabricate our own and we've still got some tweaking to do, but, uh, I think it's, I think it's going to end up, uh, uh, working pretty well. So, um, that is, uh, that's it for, for now. Kind of our next thing is, uh, we're going to move on to the carb, uh, to rejet it. And then after that, uh, we're going to move on to the transmission. We've got everything to put it back together. And once we get that back together, we'll be able to, uh, hook it all up and, fire this thing up and uh, give it uh, kind of its uh, first little test drive. So